During the 1950s, the United States of America and the former Soviet Union were locked in a ferocious race to be the first nation to launch a human being into space. Amongst other considerations, national pride was at stake, and given the polarized political and economic structures of both nations, ostensibly at least, victory meant vindication for the winner and humiliation for the loser. The race ended when Soviet pilot Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin, traveling in the Vostok 1 capsule, completed one full orbit of Earth on the 12th of April, 1961. Gagarin became an instant celebrity worldwide and was awarded many medals and accolades, most notably the nation's highest honor, Hero of the Soviet Union. In the years following his flight, Gagarin toured the world extensively, visiting approximately 30 countries, and was upheld by the administration as the embodiment of the Soviet Union's technological superiority by being the first person to fly into space. Or was he? Before his mission had even left the ground, stories began to emerge from various sources of the possible existence of other manned missions prior to Guerin's that went unreported by the Soviet administration due to their catastrophic and tragic failures. Speaking in Austria in 1959, space theoretician Dr. Hermann Obert claimed that a Soviet pilot had been killed on a suborbital ballistic flight from the Kapustin Yar launching site in early 1958. Obert provided no corroborating evidence for the story, but inferred that he had learned of it while working on NASA's rocket program alongside Dr. Werner von Braun in Huntsville, Alabama earlier that decade. In December 1959, the Italian news outlet Continentale reported that a high-ranking Czechoslovakian communist had told one of their reporters in Prague about a string of Russian space failures. He said that three men had perished on suborbital flights launched from Kapustin Yar, while a fourth female pilot had flown some sort of experimental space aircraft into oblivion. In February 1960, the Soviets announced the launch of a large space capsule into orbit, but subsequently made no further reference to the mission. This left Western commentators to speculate that the launch had ended in failure. At a press conference held two years later, on February 23, 1962, Colonel Barney Oldfield, public relations consultant for the U.S. military under General Eisenhower, confirmed that a Soviet capsule had indeed been orbiting Earth since 1960. He speculated that it may have been manned. Further weight was given to the manned missions theory when amateur radio operators in Italy who were actively monitoring Soviet missions during this period made several recordings of apparent heartbeats, labored breathing, and even a distress signal. Oleg Penkovsky was a Soviet military intelligence colonel during the late 1950s and early 1960s. Penkovsky turned informer for the United States and the United Kingdom in July of 1960, feeding the U.S. administration with vital information during the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1962, Penkovsky was arrested, tried, and convicted of treason. He was executed the following year. In 1965, his journal was adapted into a novel called The Penkovsky Papers. While the book has been labeled unreliable by some, it nevertheless makes for a fascinating account of that era, and in point of fact, contains statements which allege that prior to Gagarin's flight, several men were launched into the stratosphere and never heard from again. Not only did some of these men disappear literally, but attempts were made to erase them from ever having existed, as illustrated by these before and after photos of the top members of the original class of Soviet cosmonauts. The individual airbrushed out of this photo was Grigory Nelyubov. While his death did not occur during spaceflight, he was one of several cosmonauts to die during training in some senseless and unnecessary manner, and was not the only one to be removed from official photographs. Being a cosmonaut under Khrushchev's administration during the 1960s was not for the faint-hearted. 
While stories of lost cosmonauts lack an official admission by the former Soviet administration, the dangers of space travel, even today, are self-evident. It's therefore not unreasonable to assume that the Soviets suffered at least comparable losses to those suffered by NASA in the infancy of the space program. But with the passage of time, it's highly unlikely that we will ever know the full extent of the casualties suffered under Khrushchev's rule in a space race he seemed determined to win at any cost. Nor will we ever know just how many of those brave cosmonauts were lost to the vastness of space. <laughs>